Today, we're going to take a deep dive into every nook and cranny of Crea AI, the website that'll let you do image generation, video generation, photo editing, as well as image upscaling and real-time image generation, all for a generous amount of free credits. We'll also be taking a look at its learning tab, where if you want to find out more about one of its features, like ultra slow-mo or how to use one of their features like image prompting. It has an entire section dedicated to learning more about its own program. And to top it all off, Crea's interface is one of the most user-friendly I have ever used. Let's start with the home bar up here. So you have the home function, which is where you land. You have the chat feature. And over here, you have an example of all the different things that Crea can create, right? These are all the image generation things. So if you click on try 3D shapes, it's going to give you a prompt that'll give you a 3D shape that you can use for wallpapers or whatever you'd like. What you can also do here is just type in your own prompt and it'll generate it for you. So this is basically like the image generation tool of a chat GPT of a Gemini, but it's built into Creo, which is pretty awesome. And within 10 seconds, just of me talking, you have three built-in images that you can always just regenerate basically for free. So you can click on any one of these, you can restyle them, you can download them, right? If they were pictures of a person, you can add sunglasses, or I guess you could add sunglasses to the bread anyway, right? If you don't like any of these, it takes very little credits to regenerate them. And like I said, I've been practice testing Creo for two days because this is the second time I've had to redo this video and I ran out of credits right at the end of my second test session. So just to play around with, you'll be perfectly fine with Korea's free feature. And if you wanted to upgrade, it's $10 a month. You get plenty more credits and you can still download stuff at 720p for videos and 1080p for photos. All right. So now you have bread with sunglasses. I can download it. I can turn this image into a video. So if I click the video section, you can see the video itself. We're going to get back to the video aspect of this at the end. So make sure that you stick around though. After the chat feature, we have the gallery feature where you can click on generations that other people have created and you can modify them to your own liking. So let's say I like this or I wanted to turn it into a video. I can actually go into Flux and recreate it and it'll automatically give me this prompt that it generated over here. A stylish t-shirt design featuring multiple dynamic cars. Since it's AI, it'll regenerate it. But what I can also do is turn this into a video as well. So any of these images I can turn into a video. I can't download this specific picture myself, but I, I can always favorite it and do it that way. And now you can see that since I saved it, it pops up right at the front of gallery. What I would like to see is that it does pop up in assets, which it doesn't do, right? It still stays right over here, but maybe that's a feature that they can add. On top of generations, you can click on styles to see all of the different styles that you can use Creo with. So when you go into real time or image generation or even animator, you can change the style. So you can see all the user generated styles that people have created. So that's the gallery tab is all the user generated content. Once you get into generate, this is where you hit the real time image generation tool. So as soon as you click into real time, you're going to see a random picture and image. This is the one that I was using as a base just to test things out. I got rid of all the assets, but once you come into here, if you have a specific prompt that you want the real time generation tool to use, you can type it in here. If you don't have a specific prompt, you can always click randomize and it'll randomize the image over here. You can also add an image. So let's say you wanted a specific scene or a specific style that you wanted your image to be a part of. You can add it into here and you can also change the style. You can choose the style. So this is where the user generated styles come from, right? Or are used for, right? You can go into the community only, right? So these are user generated. This is what Korea has generated or put on the community tab. So let's say I wanted this style, right? It'll automatically change it. And then if I didn't want that style very much, it'll change it like that. So now what I can do is if I come over here and I add a square here, it's going to change the way this looks. It's not a one to one. It's not even a 50 to one, but it is cool to mess around with. I wouldn't put too much thought in it, but it's an awesome tool just to create funny things and just to mess around with it. You can upload an image. You can even generate a random image, right? Or regenerate a random image. And as you can see, as it was filtering through those images, 
it changed what's on the right, which is pretty cool. You can make it smaller, right? If I add a shape like a circle, it usually creates a type of sun, but maybe that's only if I make it yellow. Hey, oh, look, it added a tree, right? I can also come down here and change the background. So I can change the background to whatever I have over here. I can also change the background to any of the number of assets that Kriya has preloaded into here, right? And as soon as I add an asset, it's going to change this background into the cactus style. But if I change the style, it's going to change the stuff on the right. Again, it's an art, not really a science. It is definitely more just for fun, but fun it is. And mess around, messing around with it is something that that I've had a lot of fun with. Once you're done messing around with real time, you can come into image generation. And this image generation is very much like any other image generation. The difference is number one, it's all in one website. And number two, the user interface is so easy to use, which is why I love create. You can add a new background. You can even put in, you can generate a random prompt or you can even put in a random picture that you downloaded or that you took to give as a reference. After you do that, you can drop in a style, right? So again, choose from any one of these styles and then you're ready to go. If you have a prompt like a mountain lion in the forest, I'm not a great prompt generator, obviously. So I like to just randomize the prompt. So I would get rid of that image or I can like take a inspiration from maybe the poster that we just saw that we Maybe I come over here and use the poster I just created to be the model, right? A cybernetic skyline with flying cars. Maybe I want it in this kind of style and I don't have to add a style here, but maybe I want it to be a little bit more cartoonish and a lot of bit about the poster right? in this style, but with a little bit of cartoonish and then I can click generate. What's great is that it shows you the thought process. It does almost always make it, it does heavily rely on that beginning prompt though. So what I would do is probably get rid of this. And now I can have it a little more cartoonish. I did want it to be that bluish background. So maybe I can give it a blue hue, right? Like I want it to like have a blue filter almost kind of thing. So maybe I could do that. And now when I generate it, it's still going to be a little bit more cartoony. It does have that blue hue. So this is kind of exactly what I was picturing when I, when I thought of this, except the flying cars part. So if this was flying, we'd be perfect. But again, I can always regenerate it until I got flying cars. We had one flying car here. So maybe I can mess around with it a little bit more to be a lot more exact. Skipping over video generation, because I'm saving that one for last. Make sure you stick around. We can go to animator. And what this would do is if you put in two images, it'll morph it together. You can upscale it. You can also change the clip duration. So if you had more than two clips that you want to mend together, you can do it that way and just extend the clips. But basically what this is going to do is it'll take your starting image. In this case, it's of an elephant and it'll morph it into your second image. I wanted it to be mostly the elephant. So that's why it starts with the elephant, but I can always change these dials. However, every time you do change the dial, you do have to generate a new video. That's really the only downside. But if you have two images you want to mix together, the animator tool is kind of cool just to mess around with. Then you have the edit section, and this is where if you upload an image, you can edit it to your own, your own liking. So let's say I have this image, right? I can select a region and change just that part. So I want to change the bird's head to that of a husky. I can even change it to a train subject, which I will show you later on the video, so make sure you stick around. But what I can do now is just change that part. Everything else is going to stay the same, right? So if I want it to be a husky, It'll change it, it'll generate it, and you can see it morphing. And now the bird's head changed into a husky. I can cut out part of an object, right? So if I wanted a different background, I can just cut it right out. Now you have a cut object. I can select part of the object and just move it around. So now it's just completely out of there, or I can just straight up delete it. Right? So you can do a lot of different things with this just to modify an image, however you want. Now I can go to enhance and this is where things get kind of interesting. So now if I'm in the enhance tab, I can drag over a picture and what happens is now I can upscale it up to eight times the original photo, right? So this is saying 76, 96 by 96, 16, which is just way too much of an enhancement, but 
You can upscale it up to there. You can also describe how you want to change the prompt, right? So 100% change will change exactly what you tell it. Lower the strength, the more AI takes over. I've had mixed results with this. So it's not always an exact science, but as an upscaler, this works pretty well. All I have to do is click enhance. I'm not going to modify it in any way because, again, it doesn't really work all too well in my testing, and then it'll enhance it. What has worked decently well is the scene. What I can do is choose another image, let's say, of my dog, and now it all I have to do is press switch back background, and it'll switch the background of my dog, which is kind of cool. And as you can see, it is doing both at the same time. This is the original and then when it upscaled it, it didn't change too much, but you can definitely tell a lot more texture on the right side as compared to the left side, right? Everything from his jacket to even its face, it did change his face, which is like the AI part of the enhancer. But for the most part, it did a very good job, especially in the jacket itself and even the hands of making it just that much more upscaled and realistic. It is very clearly not the same picture as like in it. AI has taken a lot of liberties, but for the most part, it does look pretty decently upscaled with a lot more details. Now, this is the background of my dog on the right side and the regular picture in the background on the right. So you can see the wood paneling as the background. It kind of changed the color to match the color of the wood paneling and whatnot. It didn't change too much, which I kind of like that it, it kept a lot of what the original had to offer, but really just changed the background exactly what it says. I can do a scene prompt, but again, I've had very varied reactions with that. And most of it have not been good. So you can definitely test it out in your own time, though. The next part of this is the train section. And this is where if you upload three to 50 images, you can actually train the model to whatever picture you upload. So you can see here, I uploaded three pictures of my dog and I trained the AI. So now I can use it with Flux and I have that same style. But now I can say, put Dugan, because that is my keyword. So anytime I use the word Dugan, it'll put it in here. I can also just use this as a reference, but in, on, in, airplane. And now I can click generate. Now the same picture that I used to train it, now he's in an airplane. And all I have to say is my keyword right here, which is pretty awesome. I can also do the same thing when I get to video generation, but that is, I can also use the thing that I train as a video generation template as well. And speaking of video generation, that is the next thing and the last thing that we're going to go over in this video. There is the assets tab, which is all the things that you've created or downloaded. I right, through all my testing, this is what I've, what I've been doing. But the last thing that we're gonna do is video generation. Now with this one, they do have all of these different models, right? They have WAN 2.1, which is brand new within like two weeks. They have VO2, which is Google's model that came out like two months ago or so that I still don't have access to, but I can use it here. There's also Luma, there's Kling, and there's Runway. Just to name a couple, those are the ones that I have used before. So far, Runway has been my favorite, but that's only because I have not tried VO2. Pika, the last time I used it was when I started this AI journey like a year and a half ago, and it wasn't great. So I'm sure they've updated it since then. But what I have noticed about this video generation is that when I ask it to create something and random, randomly generate the image that it creates the video off of, it does a great job at following the prompt. When I tried to do the same thing, but I used a still image of an elephant, it did not follow the prompt at all and just gave me the picture of, just gave me a video of the picture that I had. There's no beach, there's no zip line, didn't really do much. So the best thing that I've done with this is definitely creating it from scratch. But what you can do from here is once you create your video, whether that be from scratch, what I would, I would highly recommend, or if you just wanted a video of a photo that you took, what you can then do from there is you can add sound effects. It'll automatically add sound. You can't really choose how to add it. You can extend the video of up to, I think, five seconds. And of course, you can just download the video straight to your computer to use for whatever. Everything you download, everything that you create, you can, and then when you play it, this has created the sound. Didn't really change much. I had no way to do anything with that, but 
pretty cool nonetheless just to mess around with it. With that being said, that's my full tour for Crea AI. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you click the link below to check it out for yourself. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And if there's anything that I missed or that I can make better for next time, let me know. If you want a comparison between all the different video generation models, let me know in the comments down below. I can certainly take a look at that also. And if there's anything you want to see for future videos, let me know down below as well. Other than that, we have a great day and I'll catch you next time.